we, I mean, we got work done. It's, uh, it was good Tuesday practice. I mean, we um, got live work in, uh, which was good. We got live work in on Saturday a little bit. Um, we won't go live Thursday because we'll scrimmage um, this Saturday. So the open practice on Saturday, um, we'll, we'll stretch at 10:15. That's when we kind of get started, and then that'll be a that'll be a scrimmage. Okay, so that'll be a full you know blown uh, you know scenarios and and all different kinds of things. And so, um, pretty pleased with the kind of the the intent for 26 periods, which is a you know, two hour and 10 minute practice. Um, you know, in period 26, there's still people going after it pretty good. And that was a big focus is don't let ourselves have any valleys in, in the course of practice. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I think uh, I mean, we're getting uh, quality effort from all the positions right now. I see improvement uh, in a lot of things. The biggest thing that we, you know, I think the biggest thing right now is um, progress at offensive tackle, you know, that's, that's got to come um, because I think that's kind of where I, you know, it was a challenge that Coach Tripodi gave to that group today is to find out who's, who's going to be those guys that step up and, and get that blocked and get the protection done and, and that part of everything. I think our missed assignments are, are, are down. They're, they're pretty good shape right now. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm pleased with uh, where we are for seven practices, um, pace that we're working at, the pace that we're going, uh, all the different work that we're getting in. We've put in more. Uh, give make Aaron Bowl the defensive coordinator, and he could install stuff at a faster pace than I did. And so I guess that that's our. We have a lot of people back on defense, so that's um, kind of worked out all right. And so um, yeah, I mean, I think. There's a lot of good things to it right now. We have a lot of stuff to clean up. We're not game ready. We're not, we don't need to be game ready. But uh, we have a lot of uh, things that we want to clean up and address. But I'm excited to see Thursday's practice and then Saturday's scrimmage. I'm looking forward to, you know, kind of seeing that. We're going we're gonna to get after it on Saturday, so it'll be, it'll be good. I don't know. I mean, it, we put it up there, and and I mean, it, look, it's a reminder to us all. Like, you know, we've got work to do. So, I, you know, it's bottom line to it. And you know, it's a look. I think what happens is, is like, I mean, there's an emphasis by, you know, kind of. You know, what my job is is to create urgency among everybody. Like, I'm a winless head coach. I could look at it and say I'm an undefeated head coach. I'm a winless head coach. You know what I mean? So there's an urgency about everything that we do. And, you know, I told everybody today, you operate like you're on a one-day contract, right? That's all I want us to do. And so if we have a visual that helps, then we'll do it. And we may change that visual Thursday. Has Chris ever surprised you with just in the sense that he could be in high school right now? It seems like he's... That's yeah. He's a high school well, no, I think Chris Durr's doing really well. Um, you know, Chris Durr came here, um, you know, really light, really light. And he's gained 20 pounds since he's been here. And um, so, you know, the thing is, is that I think it, his ability to run and his ball skills are really, really evident. I mean, he can his catch radius is really big because he can catch a ball over here or up here or down there. I mean, he can... You put a ball anywhere near him, and it, he's got really good hands and really good ball skills, tracks balls really well. So, um, no, I mean, I think by him being here now and by him having the full off season of what he's going to have, um, he's put himself in a position where I think he, he will become playable, you know, in our season as we get into August and September. Jay, what should fans know about Ian Bell? <clears throat> um, Steady. Um, he's a consistent person, consistent work ethic. Um, and so, you know, and, and he did a pretty good job as a freshman in the spots that he played. 
he's, uh, he's going to be a solid player. Um, but when you're a young corner, there, there's going to be a mistake here and there. And there, it's just the nature of the position. And the thing is, it's like, okay, you could be young Jaden Williams and jump out of the A-gap and people gain five yards. You could be Ian Bell and get beat on a route and it's 35 yards and everybody knows it. You know, there's just a whole different deal there. Um, but I, I like his day-to-day -day demeanor, his consistency. Um, and he, he fits a lot of guys that I've had in my past in terms of just every day you kind of know what you're getting from him. And I think that's a, that's a critical piece at that position because I mean, you're always on the fence line at corner. And so um, pleased with him right now. Um, and, you know, I mean, right, right now he would, he would be a starter at the position, but um, still a lot of work to do. Sticking with those corners, I mean, how is Nas Hill coming along? Uh, it's a prog it's work in progress. I, I think, um, look, corner is different than a lot of other positions because it, there's less assignment at corner and far more technique and far more being able to, to just, you, I mean, you have to, all of a sudden you get a change of a split, you get a motion, uh, you get an adjustment that way, you got to uh, come down on a nub surface or a tight end wing, and there's just a lot of layers to it. And until you get all those pictures and until you understand all that, I mean, it's a big challenge. It's not just like, just go cover that guy, right? Um, if it was that easy, then, you know, I, I probably would sleep a lot better and, and I, you know, would only work 40 hours a week last fall. It's not that easy, and so you work 100 hours a week. And so, you know, I think in that regard, like, he's, he's coming, but there's, he's not playable yet. Like, he's a good, good athlete that's out there running around. He's not game ready yet. Starting punter roll feels pretty wide open right now. You know, what do you make of that competition so far throughout the first couple practices? I mean, I, I don't know yet. I mean, I don't – I mean, I think uh, – you know, Eric Sandvik hit some good balls. I thought Keelan Anderson did his best punting today, which was good. I think those guys continue to get better. Um, we're just going to, you know, it, we're going to see whether our starting punter is on campus yet or not. And I think that's something that, that uh, you know, that I've, you know, we've got to decide on. And, and it's just like anything, right? Like my job is to make sure that we have the best player on the field for that particular scenario. And I, I feel like that the punter is in-house, great. If I feel like the punter needs to come from outside of it, then we'll get that done too. Jay, Andrew Peasley <clears throat> used to joke that Evan and Jay Mike kind of had a thing and Evan would always go to Jay Mike and practice and stuff like that. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had a chance to really observe their relationship and their uniqueness? I believe they're roommates as well. Yeah, I mean, I mean they're two freaky athletes too. And, and so, um, no, I mean, look, if I was a quarterback, I'd go to Jay Mike too. I mean, it's just, I, I mean, it's really not hard. Like, that's. Um, Have you noticed anything unique about their relationship, I guess? I mean, they, they know where, well, yeah, I mean, first of all, they're, like, in the same classes all, like, so they're kind of inseparable that way. And they're, they're just, I tell you what, the, the two, the t biggest thing I love about both of those people is that they make coaching so enjoyable because you, you enjoy showing up every day to see those two. And not, not just those two. There's a bunch of other people too. But, like, they're just, they're just great people. They're great athletes. Um, they're built like statues. Like, they're, they run really well. I mean, they're just um, – we're blessed that they're here. And um, they do. They, they, they have a, a good – playing relationship, working relationship, along with the fact that they're like really good friends off the field and everything that way. But they're just great people, you know what I mean? And so it's, that makes, yeah, that, that's, I love those two. Can you imagine what their grocery bill looks like? Yeah, I don't know. That's, that's a pretty good grocery bill, but it's probably really healthy stuff, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, exactly. So I, I don't know. I should ask them what they're eating because I probably should, Maybe try a little bit of that too myself. Uh, with, uh, with Shea coming back, I mean, what kind of value does he bring to this defense? No, oh, there's a lot of value. I mean, is it, first of all, his experience. 
an experience at a very, a very important position. Um, you know, and I think uh, the good thing with us defensively is at every level we have an experienced player right now, right? Between uh, the D-line, you know, Shea at linebacker, um, the secondary players with Isaac White and Eckler and Rook Brown and Tyrekus, you know, so you have experience at all those levels. And now with Shea sliding over to where, you know, Easton was, um, you know, there's communication levels, um, getting everybody lined up, getting everybody going that way. But his, his experience then, he already knows what to do. So he can do these other things. He's not trying to figure out where's my eyes go, where am I aligning, what am I doing here. Like he's past chapter one and two, and he's into the, the deep part of the book, which is great. What makes Sebastian Hart so special to you? <laughs> um, I think he's, he's a unique athlete, for one thing, and a really, really, I mean, he's a great kid. Um, and that, uh, that you really, appreciate kind of the the battle that he had coming back from the knee injury, the way he played this past season. Um, he made a lot of really good plays for us as the season went on. And then where he's gotten to now with where he's at, I, I really appreciate like his, uh, his gains this off season and just the mental space he's in. And so he's another guy really pleased with because every day, we get the same Sebastian Harsh. And, that, and that's, that's a common theme. Everybody hears me talk about this one day at a time stuff and all that stuff. You win with consistency, all right? And, and that's what we've got to get better with, right? We can't have a, you know, like a really, really good performance at home and then go lay an egg somewhere on the road. And part of that's consistency and consistent in our habits, consistent in our approach, and not making something bigger than what it is and not minimizing something else. Like we, we, we just, and so like Sebastian, I see growth because I see more consistency. I see growth because I see a higher level of day-to-day -day performance. And that's the biggest thing about it. Yeah, I don't know if this is a thing or where we're at with this. Are you guys using helmet communication? Yeah, like so we, we are. In the live periods, we're using them. And some of the other team periods and stuff, we're kind of just going – and not, you know, not using that all the time, especially when we're double repping and you got coaches all over everywhere. Um, but anything that we do as a single group thing, we're using the, the helmet communication. Um, you know, look, I think, it's, I think it's a benefit. It really is. It's, it, the difference between college and the NFL, though, like defensively, you know, like you can give Logan Wilson the call for the Cincinnati Bengals and they're, they huddle. I mean, I haven't huddled on defense since, like, 1998. You know what I mean? I, it's been a long time, though. You know I mean, so, I mean, you, you can't huddle on against Texas Tech, right? You just got to get lined up. So how it changes our operation defensively, it's not going to be much. But offensively, I think the, the communication ability with the quarterback and all those things is, is really valuable. And so we are utilizing it. We'll use it uh, this Thursday a little bit, and we'll use it on Saturday. Saturday, like when we scrimmage, that's going to be game like. Other than the fact we're not going to put coaches in the box because we got to substitute and you got rep counts and things like that. It's just easier to do with the coaches on the sideline. But this hasn't been cleared yet by the NCAA, right? And, we'll, and if I'm hearing you right, the linebacker, you'll have a green dot too on defense? Correct, okay. correct. The coach to player is cleared. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, happening. that's happening. And the tablets on the sideline will happen, cool. um, you know, and that type of thing there. So, I'm all for all that. I think all those things are great. Um, the tablets on the sidelines, obviously, something that we haven't had before and haven't had to, to utilize. That's going to be we're going we'll spend some time in the summer of like what's the capabilities because those utilize all different types of angles, and so we get a chance to see some of that stuff. You know, those things will will be great tools. But the coach to player thing, you know, we actually we're going to use it in the bowl game. There were several teams that used it in the bowl game. We were going to use it in the bowl. Uh, Toledo chose not to, and both teams had to agree to. And so with them choosing not to, we couldn't use it. Um, so so uh, we would have, yeah. And we actually used it in a few practices. Yeah. And uh, I, I, there would be a couple of times I was 
you know, I use it on defense, and Easton had that thing on, and I just kind of every once in a while, because I didn't have a lot to say, and every, I'd have to like say something like make a check here, you know, say something like that. So I had some fun with it. It was kind of good. So.